Thank you for the very nice introductions. Um, my name is Kai Ming Yi. I'm the Distinguished Professor in the SUNY um, Binghamton Universities. I'm also the Chair of the Department of Biomedical Engineering, also the Director of the Center of the Biomanufacturing for Regenerative Medicine. Oh, let me see how I can go. Okay. So this is the NSF funded the rapid projects in the very beginning with the, um, the COVID pandemic. Uh, this is the research team. So it's a collaborative research and between the Binghamton University and also the Arizona State University. And the uh, in Binghamton teams included uh, me and also the Dr. G Guy German. He is the assistant professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering and a PhD student, Sebastian Freeman, and he did all the work. And uh, part of their, the on uh, the COVID testing was performed by the Dr. Corin Kibler and, and Arizona State University. So this is the problem we intend to solve and with this uh, grant on the award. And in the very early on of the pandemic, so we all facing shortage of the PPE, particularly N95 maskers. So we received a lot of requests from the local hospital and also the hospitals and other medical centers. They ask the simple question, is it possible to reuse and uh, N95 maskers by some way to disinfecting um, the virus contam contaminate the, the maskers? So we immediately thought about idea using the UVC, um, that's the UV light, to disinfect the, um, the, the maskers because we use the UVC all the time and during the cell cultures to um, disinfect the any surface that contaminated by the microorganism or the virus. Um, and uh, we design, I think it's the, uh, this is the device, I don't know where is this thing, okay. So we designed uh, several um, devices and then um, to sterilize the, to basically disinfect the virus. So the, the light we use and so based on the, the UV lights, and if you look at it here, there's a three um, category of the UV lights and it's called the UVA, that usually in the very high wavelengths, that's between the 315 to 400 nanometers. And another category of the UV light called a UVB, 280 nanometers to 350 nanometers. Much lower wavelengths of the UV, that's called a UVC light, and between the 100 to 280 nanometers. So this is a category of the lights we are much interested because, and those lights and uh, particularly can destroy the DNA. If you look at the, on uh, these panels, so the DNA RNA, they all have the thymine basis. So they, um, those bases can absorb the UVC light, very short wavelengths of the UVC and between the 100, 200 nanometers, they form the called the thymine dimers. When those dimer forms, and the DNA RNA will no longer be able to replicate it. In other words, the cell, whatever the cell or virus cannot be um, replicated. So in that way, the virus will be destroyed because they have uh, no capability of their spreading on the, among the cells and also infect the cells to destroy the cells. So that's the reason the UVC lights widely known as called a germicide disinfectants. And uh, uh, because using the lights is very easy and compared to the using the chemicals, because we know, it, uh, you know a lot of people thinking about using chemicals this, uh, to disinfect the surface or using coating any antivirus chemicals on the surface to uh, disinfect the virus. But light is very easy and very shorter because usually um, you can disinfect the surface within minutes. So uh, the study we set up to on uh, to basically we intend to discover is what is the dose we need to eradicating the virus on the virus contaminant surface. Particularly in the very early on, we designed these devices, we sent these devices to the local hospital 
And uh, on a lot of medical centers, they use this system to sterilize, reuse N95 maskers without knowing what is the right dose we require to uh, and, and completely eradicating the virus. But we, you know, in order to reach the, some efficiencies, we use the extra uh, light intensities. So basically it's, we use the more intensities than we should use. Um, then the question is we ask, that's the reason we talked to the, uh, the NSF um, about the idea said develop the model system, allow us to determine the appropriate dosage, a level of the UVC intensity. Then we can base on those data to design the more efficient UVC disinfecting uh, the devices. So this is the, basically the, the, the process. I don't wanna go through the entire design process. I just wanna show you the, some results. So we, um, we did develop the, the, the devices. Basically, this is the homemade devices and allow us to check the intensity of the lights and also the power of the lights needed to, uh, in order to completely eradicate the uh, virus on any contaminated service. Then we use these devices to determine the UVC dose for eradicating the SARS-CoV-2, that's the virus caused the, um, the COVID. So um, during this process, we discover is a very interesting um, phenomenon. When we suspend the virus in PBS buffer, that's literally just water, or we um, suspend the virus in the cell culture medium. That's the condition pe most of people use when they determine the UV dosage for um, disinfections. So we observe that completely two different dosage. If you look at it, if we suspended the uh, virus SARS-CoV-2 in the water, the PBS buffer, they require um, more energy, uh, less energy. Basically, this is the less energy on um, in order to completely eradicating the, the, the virus. If we suspended the virus in the cell culture medium, then we need a basically high energy and in order to completely eradicate on the, uh, the, the virus contaminated the surface. So then we ask the question, what factors play the critical role in, in disinfections? So we came up with the hypothesis we basically say it's the median in which the virus are suspended on um, that's played a major role. Basically it's the median attenuated UVC light and reducing the disinfection efficiencies. So in order to find out whether this is a, the case, so we um, designed experiments and we use the model system. Now, instead of using the SARS-CoV-2, we use the, uh, another retrovirus, basically it's a GFP expression Retrovirus. Then we can, by detecting the GFP, green fluorescent, uh, pro green fluorescent exp ex protein um, in the infected cells, then we can count how efficient the virus infected the uh, cells before and after UVC uh, disinfections. Then we can use the automated system. We have a high content imaging uh, system. We can use the automated high content imaging we'll be able to very precisely quantify the, the reduction of the virus infectivities before and after UVC infections. Uh, we we examined, uh, uh, used the three different wavelengths. We used the low wavelengths, 222 nanometers. We used the 254 nanometers UVC and 264, 265 nanometers. So 254 nanometers, that's the UVC light most of people use um, even before the pandemic to disinfect the, um, the, the any microorganism contaminated surface. The problem for 254 nanometers because it generated ozone, that's the chemicals have the very odd smell. And also if they reach the high concentration and quite a toxic. The, then people discover 222 nanometers UVC wavelengths, they do not generate the ozone and much safer, but also cause the contempt, um, damage to the human skin. So the reason we tested 265 nanometers because most LED uh, UVC light bulb and emit 
the UVC light at 264, 65 nanometers. So we know to compare the 254 nanometers. So LED is more energy efficient. Um, and that's the reason we try to see what is the efficiency um, of the disinfection of the UVC light and the different wavelengths. So again, we test the two different conditions. We suspended the virus in the cell culture medium and into the DPBS, that's basically it is water. So what do we discover? We discover and the, um, the UVC light was attenuated significantly in the cell culture medium. If you look at it here, this is the PBS buffer. This is the PBS buffer. This is a basically um, is the cell culture medium. Now we try to find out what is the major component which the chemicals attenuate the UVC light most. So then we check the, uh, because all the cell culture median, the major component of cell culture median is the vitamin and also the amino acid and serum. So we discovered the serum is here, PBS, that's the FBS, that's a serum. So serum uh, does not attenuate the UVC very much. So the, it, it is the amino acid and also the vitamin and attenuate the UVC most. So we screening the, uh, a number of the vitamin acid, well, also the, um, a number of the, uh, the vitamin. So we discover it's basically L on um, and also tyrosine, there's two amino acid acids absorbed UVC light most, and also one of the niacinamide, and that's the vitamin, and absorb the UVC light most. So what does this discovery tells us? There is a potential we can use those amino acid and also the vitamin to develop the UVC blockers. Because remember I mentioned to you, one is the danger of the UVC light is to damage the human skins. That's why the disinfection can't not be performed in the presence of the humans. There has to be in the empty space. Human has to be relieved from the room before you can turn on a UVC light to disinfect the surface. So this basically tell us we can, there's potential to develop the UVC block and use this three, uh, you know, two amino acid mixed with the two amino acid with the vitamin. So we'll be able to uh, develop the, the, the blockers can reduce the damage of the UVC on the skin. Now the other um, study, we uh, uh, try to understand the, to what extent the different cell culture median on the median where the virus uh, um, suspended really uh, affected the UVC uh, efficiencies. We look at the salivas. The reason we look at the saliva because most of virus aerosolized um, usually is in salivas because when you breathe out, you breathe out the virus, virus basically suspend in the salivas. So it's very important to understand the, how efficient the UVC light can disinfect eradicating on the virus when they suspend in the salivas. So this is the results. And we, you, you can see when a virus is sustained to the, in the salivas, particularly in a short wavelengths, and they are very, in, in, you know, very easy to uh, um, disinfect it because this is a show you the three or uh, three logger on, on reduction of the virus infectivities after UVC um, um, disinfections. So when they suspend in the cell culture medium, and they usually are very difficult to be uh, less efficient and be uh, uh, disinfected. So that's basically is another um, indication, another base observation we made through this grant, through this um, project, we determined, you know, saliva actually can attenuate the, on the, 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 the intense, attenuate the UVC light that means in order to completely eradicate the virus, we need to use more energy and more high intensities. And we also detect the, um, the, the environment. So basically light paths, because we know, um, you know the, 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 the deeper and the light need to penetrate and reach to the surface of the, of, reach to the virus contaminated surface, the less efficient and, uh, UVC can cure eradicating the virus. So then we detected what is the, what is the 
the relationship between the light paths and also UVC efficient. And this is the data on, and we showed you the result. It's, it's very clear. So the deeper and the, uh, the light paths and then less efficient on the, the, the virus infections. So um, this is a basically, and then based on this, those uh, study, we developed the model system. And what this model system is used for is this is a, now we have a system, we have a model, and the system can be used for anybody who wants to uh, determine, the uh, determine the UVC dosage required for eradicating the virus surface. And the model system can be used by the industry and they can use this model system to design their devices. And also the model system can be used by the agencies if they want to regulate the UVC products on a market. So that's basically the, uh, the conclusion we draw from this study. Now we know on you know, the, what affected the UVC efficiency, uh, efficiency and uh, what the design criteria we need to follow when we design the system and to determine the UVC dosage for uh, eradicating the, the virus, particularly SARS-CoV-2, um, and to reach the completely uh, disinfection and virus contaminant service. Thank you for listening.